Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, for the semi-finals of the male part of the tournament about to begin. Scheduled five three-minute rounds, and now making his way to the ring, Jarvis! So wait, it's finally down to this, our two co-main events of the evening, and Jarvis making his way to the ring. Now, Jarvis and Anna Sopkin. Controversial stoppages in the way for both of them. Right. This has been one of the ones to keep your eye on since the first round. Jarvis and Gibb, like you said, controversial stoppages, but both men made their opponent quit. Made them quit. And tonight, this one's turned into a blood war, man. There's family involved now, it's personal. And I've never seen the look I saw in both those men's eyes in the influencer boxing scene. I'm telling you right now, Malcolm, if you blink, you'll miss it. Someone is being put on the canvas. But well, when we commentated on the quarterfinals, the smart money was on Tom Zanetti, probably just being that bit too strong for Jarvis. But actually, the reverse happened. Jarvis forced him into quitting, he wore him down, I think. Here's the thing. Jarvis keeps hearing it. Tom Zanetti's too big. Gibbs too experienced. There's too much to gain for Gibb, too much to lose for Jarvis. He's heard it all and he continues to tell everybody, I do not care what you told me because I have Otis Pendleton in my corner, I have Floyd Mayweather in my corner, and they told me I'm going to win this whole damn thing. Well, when we saw the preamble with you and Shep, some of the shots of Jarvis, you forget how much pressure he did put on Thompson Eddy and how accurate a lot of his punches were. He walked through every single thing Thompson Eddy had. High guard, Floyd Mayweather-esque, and then put some really big shots on him. It wasn't just that Tom was, was done fighting, it's that he didn't want to fight that guy anymore. Can he bring that same intensity to Gibb? Because we know that it is mentally almost impossible to break Gibb, but again, Jarvis continues to can find a way to do the impossible. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome his opponent to the ring, Anissa Gibb! Now, Anissa Gibb and McBroom was, because of the beef, probably the quarterfinal that everyone was looking at last time around. Because, you know, it was the rematch, there's a lot going on. Now, we all know about the ankle, the angle we saw, we didn't see the full body, we saw him twist and turn. But we were talking earlier, and the one thing that's forgotten in all that was he was turning the heat up on McBroom in that round. And that, we both feel that possibly the writing was on the wall before that turned back. That you said it best, Malcolm, the writing was on the wall in that third round because Gibb was on the way to beating up Austin McBroom back to back like the entrance music he's using right now, the 96-97 Bull song. I'm telling you right now, this man fears no one. He's heard all the talk about Mayweather Jim this, Jarvis got power that, put down Tom Zanetti this. He doesn't care. He looked across the table at press conferences yesterday and said, I want you, I want you. Jarvis, you're already done, so whoever's on the other side, give me the winner now. These moments, though, Malcolm, if you're a game, you're picked to win this tournament. This tournament was technically built around you. There is a lot you have to show. The pressure of this moment, it doesn't get to him. I've never seen it. So again, you ask the question, what does Jarvis bring this man? I think it's a fascinating setup. We talked about the semifinals, and I think when you look at it in the cold light of day, we got the semifinals we needed. I really do.
So if we look at the two men, Jarvis the younger, the slightly shorter, but let's be honest, the reach is the only slight difference on paper, not much between these two men at all. As the legend Mike Goldberg once said, virtually identical. These two are tailor-made for each other. The way they stand, their height, their weight, but not only that, Malcolm, the way they fight. Watch both these guys step on that kingpin crown, and let's see who moves that first back step. Um, you know, it's all part of the game when we hear the back and forward. It, we know that's all that. But I really feel we've got two men here that feel slightly persecuted, that feel slightly undervalued, and I think that bubbles under everything they say. Emotion, it drives fights and it drives fighters. You're gonna see a lot of it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for five three-minute rounds and is sanctioned by the ISKA, the timekeeper at the bell, Barry Delaney, and the third man in the ring in charge of the action, referee Owen Doyle, and the three judges scoring ringside, Troy Hullahan, Connor Doyle, and Jack Johal. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the black trunks. His official weight of 166.5 pounds. He's currently undefeated with two wins. A Nepalese fighter who has finished all previous opponents, fighting out of the world famous Mayweather Gym in Las Vegas, the bulldozer, the blue car warrior, opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing the golden brown. His official weight of 166.5 pounds. He has a record of six fights, one loss, and five wins. A YouTube star, undefeated in his amateur boxing career, hailing from Saudi Arabia, representing the United Kingdom, the seven figure giver, the You understand what I expect is a clean fight. When I tell you stop, you stop, step back. All right, in case we knock down, we go to the neutral corner. Touch gloves, and you tell you make a fight. Wade, high stakes right indeed. Oh. The men's semi-final. My God. I'll say this before we get started. Leon Wills, one of Gibbs' coaches said he has to fight behind a game plan. If he Ready. fights emotionally, Ready. this fight is not Ready. under our control. But if he fights behind a game plan, we win easy. Well, Jarvis, oh, well, say that. there from Jarvis right away. Straight in. Oh, big shots already from Jarvis. I don't like the way that Gibbs taken some of these shots already. Well, Jarvis set out his stall. He came out throwing the bombs, looking to disrupt the rhythm of Anderson Gibbs. We know Gibbs is a five-round fighter. Sometimes it does take him a little bit to heat up. Jarvis starts quick. So that might be a story we want to keep our eye on during this fight. Jarvis may start this fight quick, but Gibbs going to be around unless Jarvis can put it down. Oh. Big oh. shot. The right end of the game cleanly. He's finding a home for him. Gibbs going to have to show a little bit more variety in his, not only in his defense, but in his jab, right? He pumps that jab out, but he doesn't do it enough downstairs and up. I want to see some variety this time. Stop! 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 Get back! I've got to be honest, uh, I know okay. the tension. We Box. saw the tension in the air. We saw the stare down. I didn't think the pace would start so frantically in this bout. And you know what? Watching it, it's funny you use the word frantic. Gibbs got a lot of, of, of happy feet right now, right? The feet are moving always, which is a good thing. But look at the stoic stop, stop, stance stop. of Jarvis here. Stop. Very much planted, Box. plotting forward, melodic stance, but continuing to move in exchanges. It's energy conservation of the two. Right, only used when needed. Double jab there from Jarvis, but it's not a lot of overexertion so far, which is good, because again, we're here for five. That's a nice combination from Gibb. 
Again, nothing landed cleanly yet from Gibb, but he's finding a home on his jab. He's trying to work off that to get to range. They're probably nicely at the moment. Three minute rounds, five of them. Looking for a big overhand there as Gibb. Off that jab, he's gonna throw one around the guard. We do know that Jarvis keeps a very high guard, but he keeps it pretty tight. So the idea it looks like, at least from Team Gibb, is to throw that jab to the body and then work around the guard. Overhands, hooks, things like that. You mentioned the busy nature of Gibb. Oh, there's one. The right hand landed and he turned nicely again, Gibb, to keep the pressure on. I was just about to credit the footwork of Jarvis. It's impressing me. And then Gibb did that nice little turn off the line and kept the pressure on. Absolutely. You're going to see some of the highest levels we have in the culture box for both of these teams. Oh, watch the heads there, boys. Oh, yeah. The head clash is definitely something we don't want. But again, you're looking at Gibb go around the guard. He's settled down that way. Yeah, he's yeah. Settled down. He's starting to settle into this fight, which I thought we would see. As the round and the fight goes on, Gibb is going to settle in. And that motor, as we know, just does not stop. Jarvis dropping the hands there, looking for the right to the body. Oh, it's a nice right hand. It gets through there from Gibb again. Jarvis has to get back on that jab. Yeah, the last half minute, he's just been out of range. Just a bit, just a bit. Now Gibb's teeing off a little. Bobby and Pei gets that turn, that round, in momentum. And that last 30 seconds So I was impressed with Jarvis early and then impressed with Gibb late. Yeah, I think Gibb started the round on a low slow. Jarvis came out super quick. But toward the end of the round, I think Gibb might have stolen that because, again, combination punching behind the jab. Jarvis not following up on his right hand, whereas Gibb is going to sit down after the jab and throw hooks to the body and work his way upstairs. Yeah, see, this is when the timing was good for Jarvis, and they thought, good statement at the beginning. And then Gibb slowly but surely turned it around. Absolutely. And for Gibb, here's where the success is going to come. Beautiful. In Beautiful exchanges, turn. and again, close range, where he can let some of those shots go to the body, then work his way upstairs, where the straight shots aren't as big a factor anymore. And he finishes strongly here. Beautiful to the body and head. And there, Jarvis just out of range now. Solid variety there from Gibb. That's what I want to see more of, off his jab and with his combination punching after. Jarvis, for his part, just needs to start the second the way he started the first. Just a bit more relaxed, a bit more focused. But again, the game, the emotional game we talked about, Jarvis can't get caught trying to go tit for tat. If he takes one, he can't just be so anxious to get one back that he throws all these crazy punches and tries to come to range without any kind of setup because that is where Gibb is successful. You're right, we've got to remove the emotion. He's, he's got to relax and just get to work. That's a nice double jab right there. At the right range. And that's what, how he started the first, is how he's starting the second. Some big swings and misses there from Jarvis, but again, did a better job of getting his head off the center. One of the keys coming out of the Thompson any fight was that Jarvis kept his head on the center line continuously. And maybe it was a part of the strategy to be able to hold that high guard and say, I'm just going to gas Tom out. One guy you're not gassing out is an Eastman Gibb. And Gibb's beginning to work the body nicely now as well when he gets the opportunity, especially with the right hand. Control in the center right now, Gibb is. Jarvis having a hard time getting combinations going because Gibb is just so much with his onslaught, his pressure, right? The combinations, it isn't just the pace, it's the combinations behind it. You're trying to find avenues to throw and counter back, but you just can't. And that right lands clean to the body again. He's, he, he's settling into a nice little groove here now. That was a beautiful frame from Gibb, too. He jabbed, left that frame out there so that he could measure for his next shot. And ultimately, it kept him at distance to where he didn't land or he didn't get hit with a big one. You see Jarvis waving that right hand around, right? It's the tell. He knows oh, that's another one that gets through. But Gibbs should see that right hand as Jarvis continues to wave, and he wants to go to it. It's always a danger when you use, you know, well, one thing we see coming to modern boxing is the distraction jab. Yep. You've got to be careful with it. Yeah, because there's no purpose behind that shot. He can easily be slipped and thrown with some purpose behind You leave it hanging. Absolutely. And that's when it's slipped, and that's when the shot lands. Again, you're seeing Gibb on the front foot, giving no space to Jarvis here, right? Oh, nice left hand there from Gibb on the ropes. And then solid jab to the body, and he's out of range. That's been the problem for Jarvis in this second round. Jarvis no a solid left hook there. And again, he's starting to walk down Gibb now. 
He's had some success on the front foot, but on the back. And this was a question for both guys coming into this. I talked to, to even Kenny's coach, Daley Perales, who said, I don't know if either guy can box on the back foot. And that's going to be a, a challenge here, too. Who is able to control range not only forward, but control it backward, walk your opponent onto shots, right? We haven't really seen that from either guy yet. We haven't seen either dominate, really. You just feel it is that old cliche, the seesaw battle. It's going yep. back and forward. And just when you think one of them's getting their range, the other comes back, and then they're just out of range again. Yeah, and the tough part with, with Gibb is when Jarvis meets him there in range, the jab is being there, but everything behind it is a bit overthrown, right? Gibb is landing things, but when the, get, the gap gets closed, and now Gibb has to make that decision to go looping with the shot, sometimes they're just around the back end, where if he is to maybe reframe out with that jab, and then go to the body, then upstairs with those overheads, that's where I'll have more success. But by the now he, he works that right into the body well, but do not feel the same problem with Jarvis is just that one step too close with the same thing. Where There's where Gibb needs to keep it. You see that jab in the, in the shot to the body behind it. Now when the range gets closed a bit, that's where Gibb runs into a little trouble because now you see Gibb good framing, right? But when we're in close, Jarvis gets to the shots quick, right? Those, those hooks are not as looping as they are with Gibb. So he gets there quick, but when Gibb is able to maintain distance with his jab, and then he can control distance by stepping in or out, that's where his shots land better. And we talked about the haggy jab, the distraction jab, whatever you want to call it. That last exchange we saw in the replay, if Jarvis slipped right, he's then around and over that jab for his own right hand. I want to see Gibbs shorten up on some of these shots here, especially when we're in tight, when we're in the pocket. Shorten up on some of those looping shots, right? Yeah, you can still throw those hooks, but let's shorten them up just a bit. That was a nice right hand that got through there from Gibbs. One to the body as well. And he frames out well with the jab. That's good work. Now, that was the difference I said with Jarvis. If he starts to roll the other way, he can free up the space for that right hand. He throws a good right hook. He just hasn't found a target for it really cleanly yet. Ben, yeah. that's what he needs. Ben, slip outside, but make sure you're still close enough for that right to become effective. It's a nice left hook on the entry there from Jarvis, but Gibb again is very understanding where he's in danger now. Right, you see that? One, two, let me frame out with my jab, get back to range, and start again. And again, frame out with the jab. What I like about both men in this battle, which makes it so intriguing. Nice. Oh, oh, combination from Gibb there. That was beautifully done, the, the way, the right, the left, they came through. I was just about to say, both are very good at stopping the opponent building momentum. And as I said that, I just feel that Gibb has just started to build momentum. Yeah, this is what happens when you fight Gibb. As the rounds go on, it feels like you're getting tired and he is all right hand there. This is what I'm on about. This is the momentum. Look, he's staying in there and he's just beginning to build. Now, in the previous two rounds, the other one reacted, came back, so it was a bit more back and forth. I just feel Gibb has, has really worked well this third round. His motor, it just doesn't stop, man. The, the volume of punches, it doesn't matter. This guy could go for three hours, it feels like, when he's in there. So, as these rounds continue to go on, Jarvis has got to answer. He has to answer, because you'll find yourself, without even knowing it, in a tidal wave. That's what Gibb does to guys, so Jarvis has to have an answer here. And he's got to regain the respect he had in the first round. I agree totally, because I'm, I'm really favoring Gibb in this round now, and he's catching the eye. And again, it's all off the jab. That's what I talked about as the fight started. I want to see Gibb show some variety in his jab. Look at the upstairs, downstairs. Big right hand over the top, and then a left hook behind it. That's his go-to combination right now. He throws the big overhand, and then he wants to scoop that shovel hook underneath it with his lead hand behind. And he's had success, and he's troubled Jarvis in this round. Yeah, Jarvis is looking for answers right now. Beautiful Clips left again, hook. right at, above our commentary position. Beautiful. That timing and accuracy was superb. I hope we get a replay of that between rounds just to show how good get through that shot and the levels behind what it took to land. And now he's going to the body as well. This is a big round for Gibb right now. This is a big round for him. And Jarvis, like I said, he's got to stop the he's got to stop the leak in here. He's got to turn off the faucet. If not, Gibbs is going to continue to try to walk forward. That's a nice right hand from Jarvis. That's what he needs. Well, he had to get back with something. It's not like he's in dire trouble, but he's being outpointed convincingly. He was never in real trouble, as no. in, oh my goodness. No. But he was under the cost, he was under pressure. And for me, that was a big round.
So again, you see Gibb using that frame. As Jarvis tries to throw that overhand right, Gibbs lead hand and shoulder frames out. It's nothing to be found. And then Gibb again, in and out of range. Jab out. Jab right hand out. He's there, and then he's gone. Framing away with that lead hand. And again, boom, boom, right hand, Look at that, that's shovel hook shot. underneath. Beautiful. Beautiful. And again, it's because he's able to use that jab as a range finder. Where are you at? Where are you at? And then throw some big shots behind it, then get out of range. And again, that same combination, overhand right, and the left hook behind it. <laughs> Don't be fooled. That's frustration. 100%. That is frustration. 100%. That's what a fighter does when he wants to show everybody he's not in any trouble. That didn't hurt him, or he's not starting to succumb to a little bit of that four-wheeler forward motion of Gibb. Round five, final round. He has to turn the tide here, Malcolm. He has to. This has got to be, I mean, if, if we're talking about a fight going one way, it's starting to go toward Gibb. I agree totally. He's Jarvis has to find right. a way now to figure things out and turn this fight. He's trying. The setups have to come off the jab, though. What Gibbs done well is Jarvis has been unable to retain the center, if you notice, when he wants to put that pressure on. And the referee finally warned Gibb about it. I was wondering when it was coming. Gibb is using his lead hand to frame, but he's also doing it in a super obvious way, which is against the rules of boxing. You can't just hold that hand on the head and use it to manipulate where it's going. You can be sneaky about it, Malcolm. You know that. But Gibb just got caught doing it. Nice short uppercut there in the clinch. And that's the problem for Jarvis. When he looks to assert authority and retain the center, Gibbs, Gibbs switches it. I've been really impressed. And as you said, there was nothing you hadn't said already, anyway. So watch him turn it up. As the longer the back goes on, the more you'll see Gibbs come to the fore. And I think we're seeing that now. Jarvis has got to get off the ropes here, man. He has to. He can't win this fight with his back to the ropes. He has to get off the ropes and throw something to get this pressure to stop. This Gibbs is just onslaught. Like, that's great work from Jarvis, but you have to get off the ropes after it. Slide, turn an angle, because Gibbs is chasing now. He's hunting. If you don't show him any resistance, that's a nice hook. Follow it up, though, because Gibb is taking those. And we're in the pocket. This is a roar back and forth and close range. You're seeing Gibb start to win a bit here. It's because he's not allowing Jarvis out the back door. He's keeping him there. Yeah. It's, it's lovely ring control. He's not following him. He's walking him down. Yeah. He's keeping him pinned. Look at that variety. This, this is a huge round weight. This is a huge round so far. Beautiful work there from Gibby. Goes to the body to start the combination, then goes upstairs. Then, because he has met no resistance, goes back to the body to finish the combination. Oh, he's, a, he's in full flow now. He's hitting whatever's in front of him. He doesn't care if it's body, arms, shoulders, chin, whatever, because Jarvis is feeling off that. Look at him shove off. No, you're getting back on the ropes where I want you. He's disrupted Jarvis's flow. There's nothing worse when two of you are throwing. One of you to be out of range and out of sync, and the other one to be finding the target. And this is what's happening to Jarvis at the moment. A lot of inexperience on Jarvis is probably talked about it in the lead up. This is the first time he's been pushed back like this in a fight. And he's really dealing with it because Gibb is just not stopping. He's struggling now. He's yeah, struggling. This, is, this is Gibb throwing whatever he wants. Jarvis taking it and then trying to throw Hail Mary punches at him. He is dismantling Jarvis slowly but surely in this round. Yeah. Big right hand there for Gibb. And the legs ever so slightly. There yeah. isn't the balance there. There's not there. That was a big right hand Jarvis had. But again, it can't just be one, Malcolm. It had to be more. Two maybe in this whole round. Yeah. That's a huge round for Gibb. Big round. Big time round. Now, our ring announcer said this was our fifth and final. He was incorrect. We have one more round. This is our fifth and this final. This has got to be it for Jarvis, though, man. Because, listen. Every exchange in the last round was Gibb doing exactly what he wanted to do, and Jarvis throwing him. Watch Mary's. how he doesn't let him away. He doesn't let him off the hook. He just doesn't let him get out. He expects a separation because look at the first three rounds. Yeah. We had exchange, separation, exchange, separation. Gibb decided, nah, I'm just going to keep walking forward. The other thing we've got to give cre cre credit for, Jarvis tries to tie him up. Now, sometimes you allow it and let the ref break you. You say the way he moved yep. to free those arms Absolutely. to keep the assault. Absolutely. A smart move for a guy that understands that the gas tank from Jarvis is dwindling. Give knows and that pressure he puts on, the pace he works at, there's not many on the planet that can deal with it. A lesser boxer would have allowed Jarvis to pull him in, stuck, and then go, okay, no, no, no. The pressure was for the full round. Let's see what Jarvis has here, man. 
He needs something big. These are moments as a fighter you define yourself. On Gibbs' side, you close the door. Shut the entire show down with this round. If you're Jarvis, you have one last gasp. Find it. Whatever it is, whatever makes you go to that place in the doghouse with Mayweather, find it right now under the lights or else oh, Gibbs going to walk away with the game. The only hope for Jarvis is that right hand, but even as he tried to throw it, Gibbs is catching him. Racks three, four, and five for me have been really impressive for Madison Gibbs. It's little by little how he sneaks up on you. Oh, look, look. Beautiful right hand there. Malcolm, he sneaks up on you though, man. All of a sudden, you're in the fifth round and you're like, hold on a second. How did we get here? Where was my offense? What happened to it? Because I'm starting off so well. Gibb just slowly but methodically wears you down, and he's done it here again. Yeah, he's breaking it, and it's, uh, it's a, in one respect, it's a pleasure to see the way the match works. Nice right hand there. From That's Davis. the opportunity. That's what he has to do, but he can't but he's tired. shots. He's tired. And because of that, it's one shot. He can't do it with one shot. No. And Gibb senses it. Nice right hand through there from Gibb as well. But Gibbs senses it. When he does sense it, that just means he turns it up to the next level once again, which is so impressive, man. For guys that aren't professional boxers and don't do this for a living, for Gibbs to be able to put this kind of work on guys, again, I, I would love to see the... Oh, beautiful. Uppercut, right hook behind it. I would love to see the punch stats at the end of this fight to see just how much output Gibbs put on him continuously. Especially from round three onward. It's like he, he used the first two rounds to figure out what Jarvis was doing and how best to work against it. And all he's done is stayed in the pocket, but he's circled. Level change. He circled the whole time as And well. again, oh, left hook upstairs. Beautiful right hand of the body, goes underneath it, left hook, and then goes upstairs with it. He's putting that variety on Jarvis, man. When have you seen him out of range from the third round? Of he's been game? right there. And he said it, I told you, Malcolm. He said it was a gentleman's agreement. Both guys said, listen, meet me in the middle. I know what happens when you meet me in the pocket. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not taking any back steps. And sure enough, Gibb has shown that here tonight. Last minute, it's Hail Mary time for Jarvis, man. That big right has got to come from... It's got to come from his socks and catch him. <laughs> it does, man. It's got to come from his soul, and I mean in both ways. The soles of his feet and the soul inside, man, because it's, it's got to be. Otherwise, Gibb is taking home a victory here, and Jarvis is just dead tired, isn't he? He is. Um, that's the other problem for him now. That right hand might not carry the sting anymore either. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. This is great cool. work, man. Continuous onslaught here in this fifth round. Body work, then upstairs. That was a nice cheeky right hand from Jarvis, but again, it's the same old story. It's one hand and then nothing. One shot and then nothing. Gibb is just putting it on him time after time here. Last 10 seconds, looks like both guys are going to finish it strong. Gibb's been a joy to watch in the last three rounds. Absolute joy. There it is. Look at the body language, right? Yep. Says it all. Yep. There's a clear winner in this one. And his name is the Nissan Gibb. I always felt the winner would come from the next bat we're going to watch. This man's made me rethink that. <laughs> Malcolm, he was picked when this tournament started as the favorite for a reason. I don't know of any influencers that can handle that kind of pace. He that just, was phenomenal way. He just puts it on you, and it's not just pressure physically. It's, 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 it's. I don't know. It's the volume of punches. It's the charisma, the, the mantra that he just continues to beat off. Nothing. A great poker face. Nothing faces him, and he just walks forward. More punches. Walks forward. More punches. Got you looking at the rounds. Like, how, what round are we in? I thought this was round two, and we're at round five, and he's been swimming while you've been sinking. And wherever you turn. He He's there. Yes. It just does not let up. He does not quit. And again, I think he just punched his ticket to the finals. I'll have to go find out now. Oh, you will, Wade. I'm almost certain you're right, though. What a performance there for Madison Gibb. I feel from round three onwards, took the bout by the scruff of the neck and just kept Jarvis under consistent pressure. Always in sync with him, always moving, always turning, always able to fire back. By round four, Jarvis sadly was reduced to single punches. And as I said, this sets up an incredible final because now I feel Alison Gibb has really set out a stall there. I can't wait for whoever meets him in the final now. Masterclass from about the midway point.
Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Two judges scored about 49 to 46, and the third judge scores about 48 to 47. And your winner, by unanimous decision, Anisa! <laughs>